on. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And in today's one, we're checking out the brand new Hyundai Grand R10. But not just any Grand R10, the R10 with the Bunda. I'm in the sedan. And I really like what Hyundai have done with the new R10 range. They look modern, they're up to date, they're smarter, they're sharper, they really, really look good. And if you looked at the sedan version from the front, you'd have no idea that it was any different to the hatchback. But it's when you start to look at it from a side profile, where it really stands out. And, and I mean, it stands out, like it's got a boot. And yes, there's a lot of benefits to having a sedan because now you've got a lot more room in the back to store anything. You can go on long road trips, family trips, you can chuck it full of kids sports equipment and everything like that and you're not really compromising on space in the back either. But what I don't really like about the new Grand R10 sedan is the way that they've actually designed the lights. So what they did really nicely on the R10 hatchback is they gave it a cool light bar that runs across the, the top just underneath the window and it looked modern and sleek and really really good they then tried to apply that to the sedan but I don't think that they did it very well now that light bar is kind of there but it runs across the bottom underside not on top so it looks a little bit droopy and a little bit sad I think if they had actually moved it and run across the top of the boot lid that would have looked really good so I'm hoping that everyone globally at Hyundai is watching Greg Dennis reviews and I wouldn't see why not but if you're hearing me there's some ideas for the next R10 sedan that you bring out okay enough about that let's go have a look at the car on the outside a little bit more you've got to admit it's a great looking little car and with these fresh looks it's cleaner more modern and a little bit more grown up and these new daytime running lights definitely elevate the front of the car but it's at the back where the major differences lie check this out And looking a bit closer at the detail, you've got a more modernized badge up front. And when it gets darker, you can really see how these LED rear tail lights shine, as well as the front daytime running lights. And because you've got a black seat pillar, it allows you different types of contrasting roofs. You've got a set of really cute 15 inch wheels. And all combined, it leaves you with a really good looking little car. Then to talk a little bit more about what I'm actually driving. So this is the fluid model of the R10 sedan range and these sedans only come in a fluid version so that's really just the top of the level specification that you can get so you are going to get a better looking exterior with some of the black and the daytime running lights and on the inside you are getting this shim leather wrapped steering wheel so it's just the top of the range version with all of the bells and whistles ticked off and i'm sure you would have noticed my left arm is doing a lot of work down here that's because i've got the five speed manual version which is actually really nice. I'm enjoying the way that it drives. Um, the gear shifts are actually quite snappy, which is what makes it quite fun, is because they're not so long and hard to move around, but they literally just move with the tap of a finger here. They move into place, which is actually quite cool. And I've never experienced quite a snappy gearbox in a car this size before. And then onto the heart of this beast. And this i10 sedan is powered by a 1.2 liter four cylinder, naturally aspirated engine that puts out 61 kilowatts and 114 newton meters of torque. Now that's not a lot of power by any means, but in a car of this form factor, it's quite small, it's quite nippy. So I think that it's okay, but you are going to struggle a little bit when going on those uphills and needing to drop a gear to overtake. I think you are gonna feel it a bit, so you're gonna have to prepare in advance if you're gonna be making such moves. Come on. Hey, and I'm at 60. And I must say, I'm very impressed with how this car actually drives. In terms of it being very comfortable, it absorbs a lot of the road imperfections. You aren't bouncing around in here. It's not super noisy either. So I think that they've got this formula down really well. Good job, Hande. But the benefit of having a smaller engine and a smaller car is that you're also going to have great fuel consumption. Now, Hyundai do claim about 5.5 liters per 100 k's for this car. I'm currently achieving around six, 
which I don't think is too bad. I am only really driving in the suburbs and around town here. I haven't taken it on a big, long highway drive to get those numbers down yet. But another impressive stat is that this car, when I also received it, was giving me a range of just over 700 kilometers. Now, this is also only a 37 liter tank. So if you do the math, I think this car can be really, really fuel economic. The pull-off is really nice. It's quite zippy there, but it then starts to flatten out a bit. <laughs> but I think the good thing there is that it's, it keeps you honest and it tries to keep you at the speed limits all the time because it's not in a hurry to make you go any faster than that. And then onto the pricing. So this manual version goes for 285,500 Rand and then the auto version goes for 315,500 Rand. But if you aren't too scared of getting involved with your car and changing gears, then I would definitely recommend getting the manual and save yourself some money. And then taking a look at the interior, I feel like the changes and the modernization that they've made to the exterior of the car are definitely reflected here on the inside too. Stepping inside the Grand R10, you'll be pleasantly surprised with how cool and funky it is in here. It just looks like Hyundai have put a lot of time in designing this interior. The steering wheel isn't just plastic, but it's covered in some sort of vinyl, so it feels like it's really premium, but it's not actually leather. And the theme of sporty red is consistent throughout the car. While it's not very sporty, but when posting pictures of just the steering wheel with this red trim, people actually thought that this was a high performance end model. But one of the strange things that stood out for me on this car was the microphone that you use for your calls. It really looks like it's a third party installation. But hey, this is a budget car, so we're gonna quickly forget about that. The highlights of this interior is definitely the red that they've used all over, especially on the vents, the steering wheel. I mean, look how good that looks against the black. They also use it here on the gear shifter, as well as on the seats. And I think that's where it really stands out here because these seats look really, really sporty. And no, they're not super supportive, but they're still pretty comfortable for your daily driving. And then onto some storage and other features. You've got some space here in front of the gear shifter to store whatever you need. You've also got a USB and a Type-C, which is pretty handy. Another highlight of this interior is this high quality infotainment screen here that houses Apple CarPlay and Android Auto wirelessly. You've got some clever storage carved into the dash, as well as a spacious cubby hole just beneath that. Down in the center, you've got an array of different types of storage bins, but I would definitely love an armrest. And then climbing into the back here, you'll find that your passengers do have a USB slot as well as some aircon vents, which is quite cool. And from a legroom point of view, I must say, I'm pretty surprised that I've actually got space in front of my knees here. And that's in my driving position. And now it's time for the verdict, the GDR test. So should you get the car, should you drive the car, or should you remove it from the list of cars that you're looking at? Now I would definitely say, go drive this car. Now the reason I say go drive it instead of go and get it, is because if you're looking in the price range of 285,000 Rand, then my money is going to go towards the Suzuki Frox. Yes, that car is a little bit bigger, but I'm now not comparing car for car. I'm comparing what you can get for the same price. And for me, my money would go to the Frox that is also a lot more powerful, a lot more comfortable. It's just an overall better car in my opinion but this is definitely not a bad car. So if you're looking for something with a much bigger boot, also something with a seven year, 200,000 kilometer warranty, then you might wanna go look at this. So go take it for a drive, go and see how you like the Hyundai Grand i10 sedan. Now, if you are in the market for a Hyundai or looking for an i10, then please go check one out on changecars.ca.za. They're a website that sells new and used cars, but the best thing about them is that they actually vet all of the dealers that sell cars on their websites. They're also approved by all of the auto manufacturers as well as Discovery Insure. So you've got the peace of mind to know that whatever car you decide on buying is gonna be of great quality. So thanks for watching this review on the new Hyundai Grand i10 sedan. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned a little bit more about the car. And if you did, please will you drop a like below. And if you wanna see more videos and other car related content, then please make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel. And until then, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.